Morning church, sunny day outside, we're going to praise the Lord for the beautiful creation, for His creation. Heavens declare, glory of God, and all of the world will join in praise, His wonders proclaim, the oceans and skies up their voice he has made will rise to bless the king of all kings so let us adore him let us adore him Jesus Christ is the Eternity, eternity's king is coming again. Though all of the earth will fade away, his truth will remain. So let us 
There's a song. Declare these words, church. This is my prayer in the battle, when triumph is still on its way. I am a conqueror and go where with Christ, so firm on his promise I stand. I'll bring Christ. And I will bring
I'll bring praise. And I will bring praise. I will bring praise. And when the falling is a shadow, I will rejoice. I will declare God is my victory. All my life. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hello, church. How are we? You're good. Well, at least we've got one person that's good. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Where would we be without mothers? Happy, happy Mother's Day. I hope you're being treated well. That's good. Okay. Um, we have... Coming up next Sunday, we've got Creation Ministries coming uh, in the morning service, so that'll be good. Um, please tell your friends, turn up, that'll be great. Um, midweek meetings are on, Tuesday night uh, prayer meeting is on, Friday morning prayer meeting is on, midweek uh, small groups are meeting on Wednesday, 7.30. Next Saturday, the 15th, from 7 o'clock here, seven o'clock at night we have a prayer meeting so just come along and uh, you know, it's an open-ended sort of prayer meeting it'll start at seven and finish whenever the Lord tells us to go home um, so you can come for half an hour ten minutes whatever you can spare just to pop in and just to pray uh, there's lots of things that we need prayer at this day at this time we still obviously got this COVID thing hanging over everybody's head, so we need to pray for that. Um, there's lots of uh, uh, things that came up. We were at uh, at the Canberra House of Prayer on Friday, and uh, the lady that was speaking brought up lots and lots of issues that need prayer. She spoke wonderfully well and uh, really uh, opened up a a whole swag of things that I've never even thought about. but So it was good. So come along on Saturday the 15th. That would be good. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Um, we, um, I will mention cleaning team. Okay. We, we really need to bolster our cleaning team. We really, really appreciate our cleaners coming in on a Monday, um, 9 o'clock. And uh, uh, 
do and clean the church. Uh, you know, you come in on Sunday and it looks fantastic and it's all nicely done, but there's lots of work that goes on in, in keeping it that way. So, look, if you've got a bit of time on a Monday morning, then come along. Um, I'm sneaky. I do. I, I am sneaky. Uh, I, I go and do the banking uh, for church on a Monday morning. Uh, and I just happen to arrive back at church just as they're finishing and they're having their morning tea. And I just happen. It's, it's so good. Their morning tea is so good. And so I just have to sit down and, and you know, encourage them by partaking of their morning tea. So, you know, it's a, that's good. But so that's something you can look forward to if you want to join the cleaning team. They have a very good morning tea. Okay, and we're having communion this morning, okay, and um, we have these little things, okay. Um, got them this week. They are um, a wafer and the juice all combined, okay, and it's all sealed, all right. So when you get them, there's two seals. The top one is just a, 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 a little film. You pull that off and that will, uh, then you get to the wafer, you know, down that, and then pull off the, aluminium foil to get to the juice okay now you need to give it a shake because um, it is juice and it's been so you'll need to shake it first so I want to see everybody doing that okay. no, not really but okay so that's how it's going to happen okay so we've got um, because with COVID we want to make sure that we're doing everything we possibly can to keep everybody safe is that me or yeah Oh, that's all right. That's okay. I'm listening, Lord. I'm listening. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so when you get it, okay, um, Bruce is going to bring us the message, but when we get it, that's what you've got to do, okay? It's, it's, there's the two, two uh, seals on it, the top one to get at the wafer, and then the second one to get at the juice, okay? Everybody happy with that one? Okay? So that's how it's... You'll get used to it because I bought a few, so we'll be using them for a little while, okay? So... Uh, uh, until, well, whenever COVID finishes, whenever that might be. All right, so that's that. Okay. All right, so we'll get on to tithes and offerings. Okay, uh, the giving baskets at the front, uh, direct deposit, obviously, into church bank account, which is always a good way of uh, doing doing it. You can set it and forget it. To, uh, uh, and then we've got giving envelopes that are, uh, for things that you might want to give over and above your tithes for special purposes. All right, so let's, let's read the, the scriptures today. Psalm 79, 13 says, So we, your people, and the sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. Psalm 106, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Okay, and I don't know what the last one is because it's certainly not Psalm. But anyway, we'll leave that one. Let's all stand up and let's get the uh, um, uh, confession together. It says, as I give in today's offering, I give thanks to God of my salvation, to the God who has shown me unmerited mercy and gives me a new heart, a new life, a new destiny. Thank you, Lord. For all your gracious provisions, I am amazed at how you are watching over every area of my life. I bring my offering this day with a thankful heart. Amen. So if you've got your tithes and offerings, then please just bring it forward, put it in the basket. And uh, I call Bruce forward and uh, can uh, Helen and uh, um, Phyllis hand out the communion elements and... Uh, then we will we'll continue. Thanks, guys. Good uh, morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, to church. Lovely to see you all here. And we do have a uh, a couple of uh, visitors. I, I won't embarrass them by uh, pointing them out, but uh, you are also 
very, very welcome uh, this morning. Um, today's communion message I've uh, entitled uh, Hidden Treasures and uh, we'll see the fingerprint of the uh, Spirit in Scripture and how everything is uh, tied together. So if you'd like to think that the, uh, the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So I'm going to open with Ephesians 1, verses 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So think about that for a second. Each and every one of us that's in Christ was chosen in Christ from before the foundation of the world. So uh, you know, the Bible tells us that God is the Alpha and Omega. He's outside time as we, uh, as we understand it. So what I'm going to do this morning, um, going on to uh, reading from uh, Genesis. And this is about uh, Abraham and um, Isaac. And my introduction will become clear as uh, this passage is read out and then I provide some clarification for you uh, afterwards as well. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the, bla for the place God had told him about. So God's actually appointed a place. God has told him where he's actually uh, going. On the third day, and remember this as well, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. So, um, so God's been told to, uh, sorry, God told uh, Abraham to sacrifice his son and Abraham's being obedient. But he's also saying to his servants, We will come back to you. So Abraham had faith. So either Abraham uh, believed that God would provide an alternate sacrifice or um, Abraham was fully prepared to sacrifice his son and knew that God would actually return him to him. So Abraham took the word for the burnt offering and placed it, uh, placed, uh, it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering. Perhaps if I put a, a different emphasis on this, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and took the knife and reached out to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there was a thicket. He saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. So there's some uh, prophetic... Uh, um, significance behind this i think i think abraham realized he was acting out uh, prophecy so there's three days there was a sacrifice to be made god himself 
would provide the sacrifice. And it was actually that point, 2,000 years later, where Jesus was sacrificed on the cross for us. Jesus' blood was shed. So I think Abraham knew he was acting out a prophetic uh, 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 provision of God for us. And remember that we were chosen in Christ from before the beginning of the world. So we, uh, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, we give, we give thanks this morning. And um, if, if you can open your uh, offerings uh, now, <clears throat> sorry, a bit of asthma playing up here, but um, we just thank God that he knew, God knew from before the foundation of the world that man would sin and fall. <clears throat> and he knew that he himself, some, you know, um, 4,000, 5,000 years later, uh, in the context of the creation, uh, would appear on this earth in uh, heavenly form. So in, in uh, 1 John 1, um, first, uh, sorry, the uh, book of uh, John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we give thanks to God. So um, if you take of the uh, bread now, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your body that was shed for us on the cross. And now we, uh, we take of the, uh, the wine, um, or the juice symbolising the wine. Thank you, Father, that your blood was shed for us and that we are cleansed of all sin, past, present and future in Jesus' name. And if you're not sure of your salvation, um, and if you're watching online, uh, please reach out to any one of the ministry team if you'd like to uh, have some more information on what it means to be uh, assured in the salvation of Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, thanks, Bruce. Uh, back to the worship team for... More worship. Thanks, guys. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so high. together wonderful 
hands. Here I am. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I'll never know. Thank you, Lord, that we can do that. Thank you, Lord, that we can just come as we are, Father God. And thanks to, to your son, you provided it. You provided, Lord, the, um, you provided the way for us, Lord, to come into to connection with you, Lord. about the Lord being with us. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the sea should I ever need reminder of how I've been set free? There 
There is a cross that bears the burden When another died for me There is another in the fire Dead, left for dead beneath the waters. I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore. Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding The power sets me free There is a grave that holds nobody Now the power lives in me There is another in the fire There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Sing that. I know I will never be alone. Joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I can see, and I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west and I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us, nothing stands between. There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the water Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding Could you be to me Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be And I can see the light in the darkness the darkness bounds to him I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west and I can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between there'll be another in the fire standing next to me Holding back the seas, should I ever need reminding? Could you be to me? I count the joy come every battle, cause I know that's where you'll be. I count the joy come every battle, 
Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy, come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy, come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Thank you, Lord, you're with us Take the bread of life Broken for all my sin Your body crucified To make me whole again I will recall the cup sinners in for your new covenant hallelujah hallelujah I live my life in remembrance hallelujah your promise I won't forget I'll walk salvation's road With fear and trembling Your way born as my own As Christ is formed in me good. as far as heights reach from the depths as 
far as the east is from the west, so far your grace has carried me. Until I see you face to face, until at last I've run my race, remind me you're not finished yet. Hallelujah. 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 I live in remembrance. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just look to you, Lord. We thank you for what you've done. Washed away the sin that kept me bound. Now I worship you in freedom. Now I sing to you with joy. Washed away the sin that kept me bound. Now I worship you in freedom. Now I sing to you with joy. God, you're wonderful. God, you are wonderful. You're beautiful. You're glorious. Jesus, we give you praise with all our hearts. We will... God, you're wonderful. Let's go. Jesus, 
Jesus, victorious, you rose again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We call, we call upon your royal name, Jesus, Jesus. You're wonderful. God, you are wonderful, you're beautiful, you're glorious, Jesus, we give you praise with all our hearts, we worship you, God, you are wonderful. You're beautiful, you're glorious, Jesus, we give you praise with all our hearts, we worship you today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, worship team. Fantastic. Hi, everybody. Yep. Hello to the people out in live stream land, wherever that might be. I hope you're having a, a great Mother's Day. Um, let's just have a prayer before I start. Thank you, Lord. For today, Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us, Lord. Father God, we can never, ever uh, thank you enough, Lord. Lord. We just praise your name today, Father. Let your word just speak into people's hearts today, Lord. Let your word set people free, Lord. And uh, Father God, we acknowledge your sovereignty over our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, my... Uh, 
sermon or my message. Uh, I've titled it, Why Do I Feel Unworthy? I think uh, from time to time, we all go through periods where we feel unworthy. Now, unworthy is defined in the dictionary as lacking in excellence or value and uh, poor or worthless. We got that one up? we going there we go lacking in excellence or value or poor or worthless see our enemy of the devil knows that to get a christian to doubt that they are worthy of god's love and forgiveness is the key to making them unproductive in their christian walk he and he uses uh, one of the main reason or main areas if not the main area is is in the in our mind okay he attacks us in our mind and there are times when memories, images, and, and thoughts just pop into our heads. It's about things we have said, things we have done or not done, as the case may be, thoughts that are not uplifting, memories of relationships that have not gone the way we would have liked, and there's many, many other scenarios that play out in our mind. So all these things can lead us to question our very salvation. The, Am I saved? Does God still care about me? Does he love me? Why would he love someone who has so much turmoil in their lives? Do these memories of things in our past just happen to come to the surface? Or is there other forces that work in the background? So I don't know about you guys, but whenever I make a breakthrough in my life, shortly thereafter, and it could be seconds or it could be hours or days, but shortly thereafter, I get a reminder of something that I said or did that doesn't line up to what I say I am now. Now, if I give life to those thoughts, I can find myself spiraling backwards to what I was rather than progressing forward to what I want to be. Okay, now, you all remember that we're all a work in progress, okay? Now, if there's anybody here who thinks they've got it all made, then you should be in heaven and not here. Because there's nobody in this room who is perfect. Okay? There has only ever been one perfect person. And that was Jesus. Everybody else, from Adam onwards, falls short. It's just the way it is. So you've got to think of yourself not as a, uh, you know, as a superior being because you're a Christian, because you're only you're saved by grace. You know, there's no, you're no different than anybody else. But now, the thing is, this is not a new dilemma. Okay, the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter seven, from verse fifteen onwards, he says this: "I do not understand what I do, for what I." want to do I do not do but what I hate I do and if I do what I do not want to do I agree that the law is good as it is it is no longer I myself who do it but it is the sin living in me for I know that good itself does not dwell in me that is in my sinful nature for I have the desire to do what is good but I cannot carry it out for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. Paul's writings sometimes can 
be a little hard to understand. Um, but this is a wonderful passage. It describes the conflict that goes on within each and every one of us. When we become Christians and we follow Christ, then we want to do what God wants us to do. But we have that old sinful nature that tries to keep on top of us. And it's a constant battle, folks, to do what God wants to do. But the, that passage reminds us that it is Christ who saves us. It's Christ who delivers us. It's not us. It's not me. It's not I can't do it. It's Christ that does it. If you try, you know, in, the, in your own self to try and become righteous, uh, you're not going to do it. Because there's always that person who cuts you off at the roundabout. My, 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 my biggest fall down, unfortunately. Or well, there's always something, a friend, a neighbour, a relative, who will say something, do something that will get that old man of yours stirred up. But it's Christ. If we look to Christ, then Christ is the one who can deliver us from those things. And we get better at it, hopefully, as we progress. Hopefully we get better at it. Why then do we have times of struggle in our walk with the Lord? Why do these thoughts just pop in our minds just when we think we've overcome our darkest fears? Well, the answer is rather simple, I guess, when you think about it. For in as much as the world would want you to be ignorant, the fact is we have an adversary who wants to keep you from reaching your God-given potential. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 tells us who it is. This is what it says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong. Firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so again, it's confirming that it's not us. Okay, it's not you trying to strive, trying to do it in your own power. In your own power, you are powerless. But when you connect yourself with Christ, you have all the power of heaven at your fingertips. And that is how you overcome. You don't overcome by try, trying to strive within your own uh, thoughts, your own uh, being or whatever, your own power. You overcome by being in Christ. Okay, the passage contains a warning. It's a beautiful, enriching promise that God himself will make us strong even though we go through troubling times. Okay, it's a, you know, the psalm talks about walking through, walking through the valley. It's not about staying in the valley, but it's about walking through the valley. We'll all have valleys. We all, at one time or another, will find ourselves in a valley. And the question is, are you walking? Or are you just going to sit down and have a pity party and stay where you are? Okay, are you walking? And if you're walking... Oh, but guess what? You get to the other end. You know, in my younger days, I used to take a group of kids and we used to go bushwalking through the Blue Mountains. And uh, look, when you're trying to keep up with 13 and 14 year olds, let me tell you, it takes a bit of doing. So all I could do was just concentrate. Next step, next step. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. They'd be there 10 minutes before me, but that's okay. I got there. But, you know, it's, it's just a matter of concentrating, getting through one step at a time till you get to the other end. And the other end is glorious. Okay, the other end was all set up, tense. I could sit down. I could relax. I could take my backpack off. I could, ah. And then I'd stand up and go, okay, boys, what are we doing, you know? 
never let them know that you were hanging in there by your fingertips. Oh, no, definitely not. Anyway. But see, the Bible teaches that there are seasons for everything. You know, to every season there is a turn. Everything has its seasons, okay? So if you're going through a, a, a bad time, it's a season. Seasons end. After every winter comes the spring. It's always been that way. Always will be that way. So if you're going through something that's not so good, good times are coming. Keep walking. Keep walking. But see, the devil's been at it right from the beginning. He's always casting doubt into the minds of God's people. What did he say to Eve? Did God really say? And straight away there's a, a doubt comes in the mind. Well, did he, did he actually? Well, you know, maybe, oh, maybe not. Maybe he didn't actually say that. But God did say that. So it's been that way all through history. Our enemy uses our past to accuse us before God continually. Zechariah speaks in chapter 3 about the accuser. And this is what Zechariah said. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. And then John in the book of Revelation chapter 12 tells us this. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren, of our brothers and sisters, who accuses them before God day and night has been hurled down. The devil is constantly accusing people and using your past to throw up and say, well, look, God, look, look what he did. Look what he did or what she did or what they have done. He's constantly doing that. You see, and a great example of how Satan tries to manipulate people is in the book of Job. In this book, we see Job being lifted up by God as an example of a righteous man. You know, he tends to say, look at Job. Look how righteous he is. He, you know, he's done doing nothing wrong. He's a great guy. And Satan takes, uh, says to, to God, well, he only does it because you bless him. Now, if you stop blessing him, he'll curse you. So this is an interesting thing. God gave Satan permission to take away from Job the things that he had but he couldn't take Job's life. So Job lost, I don't know, 3,000 camels and 2,000 this, and he lost his sons and daughters, okay? So he went through a terrible time. He had sores, he had all sorts of things. But, you know, there was lots of toing and froing between Job and his friends, you know, and his friends were <coughs> constantly giving him advice. Uh, be careful of friends who want to give you advice sometimes. <laughs> Not always the right advice, but still, I guess they love you. So. so, during all this to and fro Job never curses God, okay? He never curses God. And at the end of it all, God restores to Job double what he had lost. Okay, so he, he ended up with six thousand camels and whatever else, and he got his and he got children again. Okay, and the Bible says that you know his daughters were the most beautiful uh, daughters or uh, in in the whole land. So God uh, again blessed him, but you see, Satan still had a go at him, but he never ever cursed God. Even though he was going through some terrible times, he never ever cursed God. And God blessed him again for it. So if you're going through a bad time, don't curse God. You know, just praise God. Don't even curse the devil. Let, let God take care of him. You just praise God. Just thank him for all the good things that you've had in your life. 
You see, if you are a follower of Christ, you are a born again believer, then you can expect, you can expect the enemy will try to take you down. You are a threat to him and he doesn't like it. Okay? He doesn't like it and he wants to take you down. He wants to make you, um, well, he just wants to make you a somebody that sits and does nothing. Okay? If you don't do anything for Christ, then you're a no threat and he'll... You, can, you will just be bypassed, okay? But we are called upon to do something for Christ. Wherever we are, whatever we do, we can do something for Christ. We can do something in our families. We can do something in our neighborhoods. Whatever it might be, God calls us all to do different things. Yeah, we can pray for people. Okay. Now, to pray for people, okay? This lady on Friday... Uh, she said this, a uh, great statement. She said, prayer isn't preparing for battle. Prayer is the battle. Okay. Now, you know, you can, you can be a great evangelist, okay? You can be the next uh, whoever. You, know, you can talk in front of thousands of people uh, or whatever it might be. But... You are no more greater in God's kingdom than the little old lady that sits in her lounge room and prays. You're no greater just because you speak to thousands of people or hundreds or ten (laughs) or one. (laughs) But if you can pray, then you can create uh, some great things. You can change You can change things. You can change the atmosphere. You can change the people in the city. She told us another story. Okay, she's, um, uh, they run uh, youth, uh, youth with a mission. And she tells the story of Adelaide. Now, a group of kids, youth, they went to Adelaide. Now, Adelaide in the centre of Adelaide is the red light district. Uh, it's full of all sorts of things, uh, and it's it's a hard place. It's a hard place, and uh, um, she was she's told the story about the guys. They were getting nowhere. They were just they were like battering their head against the brick wall. It was just getting nowhere, and so they decided to go into the centre of Adelaide in the very uh, early in the morning before. It all got, all the people come and they, they just prayed and they prayed. And every day for over a week they went to the centre of Adelaide and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. And then after about a week later, this guy came up to them who was um, the best, shall we say, well known. I'll leave you to work out what that means. But he was well known in around this place. And he came up and basically he just said, what have I got to do to get saved? And they brought him to the Lord and it changed like that. So they'd been battering away for ages and ages and ages and then they had the prayer. And the prayer broke through the barrier. You know, And we're trying here in Kawimbian, well, we can do the same. We can pray and pray until we get the breakthrough. Yeah. You see, it is an interesting that our brains are an incredible thing, a uh, mushy thing, but they're incredible. Uh, the things that you do that you don't even think about. Okay, yeah, lift the arm. Did you think about it? No, you just did it. Okay. Your brain does wonderful things. It's an amazing thing. And that's where it, the battle is going to be fought. See, but all these thoughts that come in, you know, they're not sin, okay? Don't, let's not get carried away with when you have a thought, you, it's a sin. It's not a sin, okay? It's not a sin to have a thought. What you do with it, the matters. Okay, sometimes, you know, and I do it myself, sometimes 
they tend to hang around and, and I, I need to battle that. But most of the time I try and, and go, oh, psh, the door's that way. Don't let it hit you as you go through. Okay, so you just got to let these things go. Occasionally things may stick and you've got to work on them. Okay, you know, nobody, nobody can, uh, is perfect. Everybody, sometimes you have things that just stick in there and you've got to work on them. But that's what you do with the thoughts is where the sin comes in. You can either let it sit there and fester or you kick it out the door. Apostle John writing in 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 tells us to test the spirits and reject anything that's not from God. It's a reminder that what we have is far greater than what the world has. The ability to move beyond what we once were and to obtain a new freedom is ours because God's promises are yes and amen in Jesus. And this is what he says. He says, you dear children are from God and have overcome them. That's the spirits. Okay, you've got to uh, read just before this passage. Because the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us. But those who are not from God do not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Okay. So we're constantly told to test things. Okay, Just don't accept things. Okay, don't accept things as on you know as as given. Check things out. Look at things. Don't just accept what I say or what anybody else at the pulpit says. Check things out. Make sure we we are on the right passage. We're on the on the right page. We're not giving you falsehoods. We're not telling you fibs. Okay, check things out. And when thoughts, images, or anything else comes into you, we should. Likewise, test those as well. You see, some of these things are from you, some of them are from God, and some of them are from the devil. Okay, so what you need to do is 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 uh, keep God's, obviously. Uh, keep yours if they're okay, and all the rest forget. Don't keep them. Get rid of them. It's just garbage that you don't need. So we've all. I think most of us have come from a past that glorified a trinity of sorts. That's me, myself, and I. A, a great, fantastic trinity. But all that was is what the, the detriment of knowledge in God. But we've all come to a point where we've laid down our old self to take up our new persona. Okay, You are not, you are not, you are not the same person you were, okay? Or the same person you used to be. You're different. You're new. And this is what Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So the devil will try and tell you that you're no good. You can't possibly do anything for God. However, the truth, according to God's word, is that you are a new creation. Now, you can either accept God's truth or reject it. it does not. If you reject it, it doesn't make it wrong. You accept it, you know it. Okay. There is a knowing when you become uh, a born-again Christian. There is a knowing within your own spirit 
that the word of God is true. And it's not just, you know, it's not just a pretty book or a, some nice rhyming words and all that kind of stuff, but it's true. And it's powerful. And it can set you free from anything that's been holding you back. If you believe it. If you believe it. So when you're reminded of past indiscretions, and he will remind you, I've said that, he, he will remind you. He has a better memory than you do, the devil, okay? He can bring things back to your memory from when you were a small child, when you disobeyed your, your mom and dad. When dad told me not to bring bonfire wood home on the back of my bike because I could get hurt. And I didn't do what he said. And I drag in wood behind my bike. And now I guess what happened. I got hurt. <laughs> ah. Wisdom is good. Hindsight is even better. But never, never mind. But see, this is what Psalmist in Psalm 103 tells us. As far as the east is from the west... So far he has he removed our transgressions from us. And this is, goes on to say, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed, remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is those who fear him and his righteousness. This is a great promise. With their children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Yeah. You know, just like me dragging firewood behind my bike, thinking that I knew better than what my dad did, uh, <laughs> only to find out that I didn't. Well, same thing goes with God. God knows what's best for us. And all we need to do is obey what he's telling us to do. Because he, what he wants us, what he wants for us is, our, is the best for us. Not just second best or you know, whatever, but it's the best. And sometimes we have trouble in uh, accepting uh, advice from God or from anybody else. Sometimes because we think we know best, but we don't. So when you think about doing, doing what God wants, it's by far the most enriching experience you can have. John records the words of Jesus in chapter 10, verse 10. Which is, um, it says this, I think everybody know this off by heart. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Later on in chapter 20, John records this. And this is what John said. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The devil's plan is to load you down with insecurities about your past that cast a shadow over your future. Peter wrote in 1 Peter verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all your anxieties on him. And he will give you peace in the midst of those anxieties. He cares for you. Those anxieties, or troubles or whatever they are, don't always go away. But God gives you a peace that surpasses all those things. And even in the midst of troubles and in the midst of strife, you can have a peace in your heart and in your mind, knowing that God is for you, not against you.
The devil isn't going to leave you alone. I think I've said that on more than one occasion this morning. Just want to make sure you understand. The devil isn't going to leave you alone. He's going to try his best to bring you down. So how do you defeat him? For defeat him, you must. So how do you defeat him in our walk here on this earth? There's only one way. There is only one way. Paul writing in Colossians chapter 2 spells it out. Says, says this, So then just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition, and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh, was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. See, our victory is Christ's victory. All we need to do is take hold of the fact the battle has already been won. It's already been won. We're just in a skirmish. The battle has been won. I'm just about finished. Uh, can you tinkle the ivories for me? I'm going to have early mark. See, there's many, many more scriptures that can enrich your life and bring, it, bring you strength when you need it. But you need to know them. There's a catch there, isn't there? Okay. You need to know them. Now, you know, I thank God for concordances and, and now that I've been wedded to this thing, um, I've, I've got, I think, three or four Bible uh, uh, applications on that thing. So, you know, if I need a scripture, I I go and I look for a key word or whatever. Okay, now some people might say, "Well, you should know it." Well, you know, God gave me a, a smartphone for a reason. The phone is smarter than me. There's nothing wrong with using technology to remind you of God's scriptures or whatever. When you need them, they're there. Okay. Uh, but even better is to have a few favorites in your head. Because if ever comes a time when uh, the phone is taken off you and you're thrown in jail or whatever, uh, then what you understand or what you remember in your head is what's going to keep you going. Okay. The underground church, for instance, in China, didn't have Bibles. To be caught with a Bible in, in, in the communist days was, uh, even probably even now, was, was, you know, threw you in jail if you were lucky or dead if you weren't. So the only way that they had, they had to keep it in memory. They had to remember scriptures. And when they got together, they spoke scriptures from their memory. So having scriptures... Memorized is a good thing. Having your favorite scriptures memorized, keep them close to your heart. But you never know when you might need them. 
You never know when you might need them. So folks, just let me try and summarize that up. That you know. Why do you feel unworthy? Well, you feel unworthy because the devil's having a go at you. And he's bringing you or bringing back to memory things that you may have done when you were not a Christian. Or even when you've become a Christian even. doesn't uh, uh, exempt you from uh, doing or saying things that you probably shouldn't. So, but God is gracious to us. And we all should know that the devil is out like there like a roaring lion. Yeah, now, the funny thing about roaring lions, I read this somewhere. I can never remember what it said. It said um, it, it, when they're out there, you've got the pride, you know, you've got the male and the females. Now, the females do most of the uh, hunting. The, man just, the male, he just eats. Uh, but the old lion, who's probably a little gummy by now, he, his teeth aren't much good. But what he, what he does, he goes out. And he roars. And all these impalas and what have you uh, get scared of the roaring. And they run. And I mean, where do they run to? The lionesses are all at that end waiting to pounce. So you've got to be careful. You need to stand up. Don't go running in fright. Because that's where the devil wants you to be, running. He's got hordes all over the place. You stand and fight. You face that gummy lion and tell him to buzz off. Go away. You can't hurt me. I'm in Christ. Praise God. Uh, Annie, you got the prayers. We're going to have prayer time with Annie. Annie's going to lead us in prayer. And then if anybody wants prayer, uh, come on up to the front and uh, we will uh, only be too happy to pray with you and for anything that you might want prayer for. Yeah, praise you Jesus. Let us all stand. Reach out for this prayer request this morning. Thank you Jesus. Father, as we come to you in Jesus' name, Lord, we pray for Bud in the US, Lord, USA, Lord. We declare full and complete healing from COVID, Lord. And we pray, Lord, may you restore Bud to good health, Jesus. Father, we declare salvation for Regina, Anne, Leah and Alison too, Lord. Father, we pray, Lord, for the country of India. We, we pray, Lord, we declare healing physically and spiritually, Lord. And we bind up COVID. We bind it up in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that it will be cursed back to the pit of hell where it belongs in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, for Gordon in Penrith, Lord. We continue praying for healing from the serious health conditions, Lord. We declare healing for Gordon, Lord. And we pray that you'll restore him to good health, Jesus. We continue praying for Michael Benson in Canberra too, Lord. We declare healing from heart condition tumour on left kidney Lord we pray Lord that that tumour will shrivel up and die in your name Jesus Amen. we pray Lord that the heart condition Lord will be completely healed in your name and we pray for Michael that he will be, be restored to good health Jesus thank you Lord we thank you Lord for um, Daniel's friends thank you Lord that Daniel um, can witness to his friends, Lord, and uh, we pray, Lord, that you'll keep on using Daniel for your glory, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We declare comfort and salvation for Carol, Lord. She's got stage four melanoma, but we pray, Lord, we, we bind up that melanoma. We bind it up in the name of Jesus, and we pray for complete healing for Carol, Lord. Restore it good health in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, well, that's the uh, my service finished for this morning. Uh, if oh, hang on. Oh, 
Uh, yes, um, we, uh, we mentioned there is a prayer. Yeah, there is a prayer meeting Saturday night. Uh, so